Hello everyone and welcome back to the fourth and final installment of our series on Advancemates. Today we'll cover how to use the cam, slot, hinge, and universal joint mates. Plus, watch through to the end to learn how to use the mate controller. Choosing to use these advanced mates likely means you're looking for some kind of deliverable from your assembly model. Sometimes that's just collision detection, but maybe you'd like an animation of your assembly in action. That's what the mate controller will do for you. So stick around. The cam mate can be initiated from the quick mates toolbar, but for clarity here, we'll use the mate command. For a cam mate to be used, a closed loop path of tangent lines, arcs, or splines must be extruded to form a solid. The tangent faces of that solid are the path. As for the follower, the selection must be a cylindrical face, planar face, or a vertex. The slot mate is one advanced mate that can be created using the quick mate toolbar. Simply select the two entities, in this case the face of a slot and the cylindrical face of a pin, and choose the slot mate. Slot mates can be created to a cylindrical face, an axis, or even another slot. Much like the width mate, you're also presented with constraint options that allow for the movement of the slot to be free, centered, a certain distance, or a certain percentage along the slot. You can also lock rotation just like a concentric mate. A hinge mate can be used to add both a coincident and concentric relation to components. Select two cylindrical faces or circular edges to make concentric and two planar faces to make coincident within the same hinge mate feature. This mate does not automatically create angle limits though, so pair it with a limit angle mate for the most realistic feel. Now let's move on to the universal joint. This mate is a huge time saver. I needed to add four components into this universal joint assembly for it to act like it should, with rotation being transferred from one yoke to the other at a one-to-one -one ratio. This is certainly a valid way to model this joint, but instead of having four components and eight mates to define this rotation, let's replace all of that with one mate, the universal joint mate. I simply need to choose the two cylindrical faces of my rotating components and a point to define the center. This drastically reduces complexity of my assembly and will increase my assembly performance. The last feature I want to explain in this series is the mate controller. It allows us to create different poses of our assembly based on different inputs into our mates, and then animate the sequence. The mate controller supports angle, distance, limit angle, limit distance, path mates, slot mates, and width mates. With our assembly open, right click a supported mate and select mate controller from the menu. The first position is already added. We can add another position, change our mate inputs, and then update the positions. If there's another mate we'd like to add to the controller, simply select it from the fly down menu. Once we have our positions set up how we want, we can even create an animation from the positions and save that animation as an MP4 and go show off. Ultimately, advanced mates give you incredible control and versatility for your assemblies. You can create professional level deliverables, like the animation we just created, in a cinch. Plus, you'll save all kinds of time using advanced mates instead of mate after mate after mate to get similar results. Thanks for following me through this series. I've sure learned a lot and I hope you have too. If you want to learn even more about assemblies, consider a training class from CATI.